Hi, how's everyone doing today? I'm your host, Richard D'Souza, and I'm here with our very special guest, the CEO of Thesis Gold, Ewan Webster. How are you doing today, Ewan? Good, yeah, thanks, Rich. Pleasure to be here. Very excited to have you on the show again. Ewan, can you tell us the significance of the intercepts from the most recent drill results? Yeah, I mean, the, the 2023 program is a huge success, and um, the you know, that went into it with some key uh, strategic goals. And one of them was really at the lawyers project delineating the mineable underground resource. And um, the latest results out of that, well, I think the headline hole was 120 meters, about two and a half grams gold equivalent, uh, Cliff Creek South within that 27 meters, eight and a half grams. So phenomenal results. Uh, and that was right in line with our modeled stops. So really add announces down there demonstrating that there's big broad zones of mineralization with some very high grade in there as well. And then it, uh, it Jukes Ridge, similar story. Um, really, it was the objective was keep expanding that mineralization at depth. And I think the, the headline most recent one from there was something like 53 meters, about three and a half grams gold equivalent, including 16 and a half meters at just under 10. And, and at the time, that was the deepest hole drilled on that Cliff Creek system, demonstrating once again, the mineralization is open at depth and, and very strong and we're heading as anticipated. So all of the drilling at Lawyers went it, it very well this year. Um, the, at Ranch, the objective was to continue delineating near surface high grade mineralization and through a number of different zones. Um, I think we certainly delivered on that at the Bonanza zone headline hole this year for just over four meters of 120 grams gold. So it's certainly living up to its name. Uh, then the bingo zone was a bit of a surprise this year it really delivered um 25 meters of just over five grams gold i think beginning again basically at surface and then our most and i should add as well you put you'll see some more results coming from bingo um that that's the remaining outstanding balance of holes um, to be released from last year's program so i i anticipate more strong results um but just to the south of bingo our latest press release and, and maybe that's what you were getting at but uh that was from the thesis two and thesis three zones and essentially that's just part of one longer corridor that we call the thesis corridor but uh the headline there was 60 meters of uh four and a half grams gold including 19 meters of um just over 10. so brilliant results in a step out hole uh near surface mineralization and really, I think all of this just speaks to how much upside remains on the project um, to continue expanding the gold footprint that we have in coming years. Congratulations on fantastic drill results. You did touch on the ranch project and the lawyers project. Can you give us an overview on the ranch project and the lawyers project? Yeah, of course. Um, so they're uh, both projects are situated adjacent to one another they're in north central british columbia and the historic tutigon mining district and collectively they make up about 325 square kilometers of district scale land position it's essentially a brownfields development project uh, the lawyers project was an operational gold silver mine underground high grade and late 80s early 90s and then the area sat pretty dormant for you know a couple of decades and we acquired both projects and um, you know over the course of the last five years and we've quickly accelerated them through from relatively small resource on the lawyers project through to three and a half million ounces in 2022 and, and a pea uh, shortly thereafter with some robust economics around the lawyers project uh ranch project is, is pre-resource uh gold silver a little bit of copper there as well uh epithermal system that um has shown just as much potential as the lawyers project to deliver on, I think in the long term, what will be multi-million ounce potential. Wow. So, you know, the, the two projects together, certainly it's a very significant asset. And we're looking at some major milestones to continue advancing those over the next six to eight months as well. We love it here on the Rich TV Live podcast to see companies achieving their milestones. Now the company has been a victim to some funds rebalancing of their portfolios. Can you explain how you guys have been dealing with that? Um, I mean, the, the latest thing was um, it, it wasn't so much a fund, but it was um, uh, ETF, a CILJ, which is silver ETF and change in management team and then a rebalance into the fund. And 
uh, you know, there was some companies went up and some went down, and, and that is completely out of our control. And you know, it, um, you know, which stock was sold off and, and has bounced back nicely from that. And you know, it, yeah, as I said, you, that that type of situation is completely out, out of our control, and there's not much we can do about it. I appreciate you uh, giving us that feedback, so we understand and investors understand what's going on. Now, according to Cormark, thesis shares remain extremely undervalued at just seventeen dollars an ounce versus eighty-five dollars an ounce as compared to its peers. Can you give us your thoughts on this? I mean, they're spot on. <laughs> I obviously definitely agree with them that that we're very undervalued, and that's undervalued with what we have defined in the ground at the moment. So, I mean, that, that's based on, you know, the, the three and a half million ounces that uh, is on the wires project and the PEA. But, you know, I think what, uh, you know, what helps us stand out a little bit maybe from our peer group even more is that we've got more drill results to come, a new resource across both projects for the first time. So it'd be a global resource, then a new PEA looking at, bringing in not only the underground mineable balances from the lawyers project for the first time, but also near surface higher grade mineralization on the ranch project. So, I mean, that should be transformative for the project. So, you know, it, we're undervalued, but we have a very clear catalyst path uh, ahead of us over the next six to eight months, which, uh, you know, I think will make a material difference as well. Um, I mean, I think another thing that's overlooked is that we're in a part of British Columbia where the, and I mentioned this is more of a brownfield development site, but it's it's effectively a kind of turnkey um, situation in terms of infrastructure. The infrastructure is fantastic. Topography really works in our favor. It's easy to operate logistically, much simpler than a lot of British Columbia. Um, so a number of other things going for us that I think are not quite really recognized yet, but uh, I think we're going to be able to demonstrate that, uh, or I think we're going to be able to, we won't stay undervalued for long, so I'm trying to say. Yeah, we hear the Rich TV Live podcast love to identify companies that are undervalued, underappreciated, and underexposed, and we definitely believe you guys fit that bill. Why do you think retail went cold since the merger with Benchmark Metals? I don't necessarily know that retail went cold. I mean, I think that's just a sector wide problem at the moment. And, you know, we completed that merger in the middle of August and the market was already on a downward trend. And I, I think a lot of that is coming from retail capital moving into other fields. And, you know, I sat and listened to uh, Bruce McLeod recently. At, uh, he gave a presentation to VRIC and, uh, you know, that was kind of his sentiment as well. It's just like there's there's not a lot of retail investment in our sector at the moment and year over year that's, that continues to decline. But I mean, I think that just provides opportunity for the, the retail that uh, is still here. And in back to your question earlier about, um, you know, and, and the funds and the rebalancing of that um, silver ETF, I mean, when we we dropped off there, I think retail saw the opportunity and really stepped in and, and bought it back up to the levels that it was at prior to that uh, rebalance. And so I think the retail is still there. They're just looking for opportunities and being a little more uh, selective of, of what they're what they're spending their money on at the moment. Yeah. And gold been holding over 2000. So that's a really good sign for gold and for miners. Yeah. Do you believe that thesis gold will be a top three mining project in north america yes and you know that uh i think the catalyst that we've got ahead of us will help demonstrate that for sure and you know i, I think I've, i say this all the time but it's very much going to be a starting point i i believe that you know whatever we come out with the resource and the new pa is going to show a material improvement over what it currently exists on the project but it's going to be a starting point. There's a lot of upside here to continue expanding, improving uh, on those metrics. And that typically that's not the case for most companies. Um, you know, typically they put out an, a resource a PEA and that kind of encapsulates what is the, the, you know, the best part of the project. And sure that's the case for us as well, but it will continue to grow. Um, so I truly believe this will be one of the, the best projects in North America. Wow. Well, we love finding the best projects in North America and finding them early. Now, you mentioned the updated PEA, which stands for Preliminary Economic Assessment for anyone that's watching at home, will be coming out in Q3. And the economics are expected to be extremely attractive for any majors looking at the company. What could that mean for shareholders? 
I mean, I think regardless of the, the major side of things, uh, I think for any shareholder looking at the, the company, uh, you know, as you noted, we're ex- really undervalued relative to our peers by a significant margin at the moment. And I think part of that is maybe that, uh, you know, retail, et cetera, is waiting to see if we deliver on this and and are, are, is this project as good as Ewan says it is? Um, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm confident I'm going to be able to demonstrate that as the case. And so I think there's a lot of upside here for shareholders getting in at this level. I mean, the, the growth potential in the project is fantastic. So a uh, lot of upside ahead of us in terms of uh, share price appreciation, I believe, especially if gold continues to stay at t- above $2,000 and, and you know we have a better trajectory in 2024. Well, we're super excited to watch and see you guys continue to hit your milestones. I want everyone to put the symbols of Thesis Gold on your radar and on your watch list on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol TAU, on the OTCQX in America under the symbol THSGF, and in Frankfurt, Germany under the symbol A3EP87. I also want to remind you that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence and do your research whenever looking into companies that we feature. I also want to thank Ewan Webster for joining us today. Ewan, thank you for having us. No, thanks, Rich. Yeah, it's been a pleasure chatting with you. And we love having you on the show. We'd love to invite you back in the future. And for any of you guys that are watching at home, thank you guys for watching. If you're not winning, you're probably not watching. We bring you the winners, CEO interviews, breaking news, trending topics, and we bring it to you first. Thank you for watching, everybody. If you like the video, please smash the like button. Comment down below, share the video everywhere, and subscribe. I'm your host, Richard D'Souza from the Rich Steve Live podcast with Ewan Webster, the CEO of Thesis Gold. Ewan, have a great day, and we'll see you soon.